could you share a bit of information about your journey to uh, us initially when i got started i was actually in it so uh, that was when i did not have a lot of technical skills that's where i thought of taking a cfd masters program at skilling okay and that actually gave me a boost in my profile where i was able to add some really good uh, uh, industry uh, relevant projects into my profile but as a mechanical engineer how did you you know face coding to be honest like there is a lot of uh, i would say misconception that uh, mechanical engin engineers do not need to know coding what made you want to switch to cfd in particular in it i got a bit of programming uh, skills over there okay so i was looking for a domain which would incorporate both my programming as well as my uh, mechanical skills what sort of skill sets would you recommend that a mechanical engineer would or should focus on uh, you know when he's trying to go abroad or even apply for a job basics fundamentals of the mechanical engineering concepts is mandatory Hey guys, hope you're all doing good and welcome to this video. As an engineering graduate, there's always a lot of opportunities within your own country, right? But there's always a question, what lies for me abroad and how do I get there, right? So to answer all of that, I have with me Nikit, who was part of his journey at Skilllink through his post-graduation program in CFD. Sure, Aditya. Uh, hey guys, I'm Nikit Bolar here. I am uh, one of the CFD masters uh, student at Skilling. So right now I currently work as a CFD uh, support engineer at uh, one of the commercial CFD codes uh, in the US. That's good to hear Nikit. So could you share a bit of information about your journey to uh, US? Sure Aditya. So uh, initially when I got started I was actually in IT. So uh, that was when I did not have a lot of technical skills uh, in my profile. so it was pretty uh, latent so that's where i thought of taking a cfd masters program at skilling okay and that actually gave me a boost in my profile where i was able to add some really good uh, uh, industry uh, relevant projects into my profile okay and that was one of the major uh, aspects in me getting uh, admitted in one of the top universities in the world okay that's good so basically you also tried to apply you know right after college is that correct right Okay and you sort of faced some objections or something from the university right i wasn't having a lot of luck uh, with the universities that i was applying so that's where i seeked a skillings help so that i could get into the dream university that was i was aiming for all right so what sort of universities did you basically shortlist for your you know for the studies so i had six universities that uh, surya had recommended So the two were the safe universities, okay. and there were two moderate universities and two ambitious universities, so that we had like a good balance. Ambitious universities as well because you never know when uh, what universities look for. So that's where having a holistic profile and because certain profile they might have certain requirements. So that's where um, I got the shortlist from the uh, career advice team where I was able to uh, take their guidance in applying for the right universities for my profile. All right. Sounds good. You were previously in an IT company right after graduation, right? right? What made you want to switch to CFD in particular? Because my undergrad was in uh, mechanical, right? So in IT, I got a bit of programming uh, skills over there. Okay. So I was looking for a domain which would incorporate both my programming as well as my uh, mechanical skills. Okay. So CFD was like a sweet spot where there was. coding as well as the application part of it right. so this was uh, something which i felt was uh, was apt for my profile so that's how i got into uh, cfd okay but as a mechanical engineer how did you you know face coding <laughs> to be honest like there is a lot of uh, i would say misconception that uh, mechanical engin engineers do not need to know coding but that's something which is pretty common nowadays uh, most of the engineers do know a little bit of coding so right. and how important would you say uh, you know having a basic understanding of coding is for a mechanical engineer right now most of the universities do provide you a little bit of uh, basic uh, understanding of coding okay. through the uh, homeworks that they provide but uh, it completely depends on the type of role that you are looking for okay. if you are getting into development uh, mm -hmm. side of the uh, cfd then you would have to have really good coding experience right but if you are into application part of it then uh, it's 
it's easier if you know the basics okay. because you're ta- concentrating on the just the application where you need to get the results not just uh, code everything from right. scratch okay and after graduation from your masters what sort of opportunities did you actually foresee so one thing which i did was even before i started my masters i was actually looking at the job profiles okay. that uh, was available and that i was interested in okay and i made note of the skills that those companies were looking for okay so what i did was during my masters i actually picked the picked up the clo- courses and uh, the subjects that was in line with where i was uh, the jobs that i was looking for okay and that actually gave me uh, that actually made sure that my profile was um uh, well rounded okay uh, and it had the right skills that the companies were looking for okay. so that actually uh, made sure that uh, i was able to get the uh, calls call back from the companies that uh, i was interested in two years down the line right and you know uh, what sort of skill sets would you recommend that a mechanical engineer would or should focus on or uh, you know when he's trying to go abroad or even apply for a job the first thing i mean uh, basics fundamentals of the mechanical engineering concepts is mandatory and like i said depends on the role that okay. you are looking for if okay. you are going for a designer role then obviously having um cad cad tool experience right. having some projects where you have shown that you are capable of using a particular tool would be uh, mm-hmm. relevant okay. but if you are going for maybe uh, application related role then having projects which are uh in line with the application that you are focusing on would be more uh more uh, advantages to you okay you applied for a job in india as well as in america right what sort of differences did, did you actually see in the job application process or was the experience completely different over there 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 is something called as a career fair that mm-hmm. happens uh, every semester uh, depending on the university it might happen once a semester or twice a semester okay so i would uh, highly recommend students to make use of it because you have companies coming there and you get a chance to interact with them okay. and build the relationship because okay. that's more important uh, because there are a lot of com- lot of people applying and if you your resume or your application might get lost if oh. you don't have that physical connection with the recruiter or someone so okay. if you have if you are able to develop that relationship okay. even if they don't have any openings at the current moment okay. if they have something that comes up and it matches your profile they might okay. give you a call later so that's something which i would definitely recommend okay. making uh, use of the network that you have use the alumni um, network oh. that they have start contacting them and okay. uh, I think that's that's about it. It's more like you are able to make a list of the companies that you really want to work okay. and start uh, c- contacting them and see how you can get into like information interviews. So that's okay. something which happens where you are reaching out to them just to understand how they got to the current position that they currently are. Okay. And once you are able to develop that relationship if they have any openings then mm-hmm. you have an opportunity for like okay. you can ask them for a a referral uh, okay. in case something opens up which you are interested in okay so basically uh, would you say that researching and proper networking uh, has helped you uh, you know be where you are right now exactly so that's one one important thing is knowing what the company does right because when you're going to these career fairs it's important that you are not asking the company what what they do it's okay. they appreciate when you know what they're doing right. and you're able to provide maybe there are certain certain problems certain things that's currently happening right. in the company that they might be uh in the news for mm-hmm. so you can bring that up give solutions show okay. that that you're already on top of the game okay. and that's where they see that there's a potential candidate who okay. is already invested in the company so that's okay. where you get their attention so what about the preparation that, that you actually did for the interview itself like uh, did you prepare more on you know uh, Uh, fundamental questions like for example when you are in india you uh, you go for an interview right you have a basic set of uh, questions that you prepare for mm-hmm. is that how you prepared yourself for it or uh, is there any other method that you apply for it the preparation was pretty straight forward i focus a lot on the basics okay because uh, that's that's where like depending on the role uh, as i said mm-hmm. the because depending on the what the job is uh requires 
Mm. You can actually prepare. You need to prepare according to that. If okay. there is like a requirement for the CAD, they might be more interested in your CAD experience. Right. Right. So that's where the uh, that's where the uh, you can actually streamline your learning. Okay. So that you are focusing on the things that might come up. Okay. So that's that's something which helped me a lot because mm. I if I am interviewing for something where the role is more of heat transfer, okay. then I would revise a lot of topics on heat transfer. Right. And maybe. highlight the projects that i did on heat transfer okay and apart from technical things lot of things that the company focuses on is also on the behavior type oh. of questions because one of the reason is it's easier for them to predict how you react to a certain situation oh. and how fast you can learn things because okay. they do have most of the companies do have these uh, initial training where mm-hmm. they train you with the uh, software knowledge or some of the things that are required for you to complete the job successfully okay but what they look at is whether you are coachable whether you can you are you are able to learn those things if they're able to invest okay. time and money in in you so mm-hmm. that's something which i would try to come up with stories where you are in past how you had come across okay those uh, situations uh, which which shows the value that you bring to the table right okay got it and you know as part of the job application process uh, what helped you stand out from the rest of the crowd so as i highlighted before it was more of the projects okay and also i had multiple sessions with the career team okay. where um, they checked my resume thoroughly and even there are different documents that you need for the application process mm-hmm. like your sop statement of purpose and your letter of recommendation okay so that's where your sop is where you are actually telling the university why they have to uh, why you are a good candidate for that particular okay. program and that having a strong sop can make a huge difference it okay. can actually uh, cope up for the low score in case you have in your undergrads so that can oh. actually um, you can actually um, they get that if you are able to write a very strong uh, sop okay uh, have you seen any instances of this happening basically if you have low grades do you think there's a chance for a student to actually you know uh, get to a masters in abroad yes definitely so my uh, my grades were high so it, i did not have a personal experience right. but i do have a few of my uh, friends oh. who did have a pretty average uh, gpa okay. and they had a strong strong uh, application oh. uh, or a holistic application okay so because of that they were able to crack into one of the top universities so oh. definitely because the co- as long as you are above a particular threshold that the company that the university sets okay you should be good because they are just checking so i guess uh, that's pretty much all of the questions that anybody would have right uh, so any final piece of advice for our viewers uh, who are actually trying to aspire for a, a masters abroad the first thing is figure out what exactly you want to do masters in and once you have that uh, that's where you would have to build a strong profile by po- by working on industry relevant projects okay. so that's where skilling actually uh, made a huge difference where uh, i don't think i had a chance to do that in my undergrad okay. so skilling courses actually helped me uh, have some really strong projects uh, under my name so that actually was one of the game changers while okay. applying and also for my masters okay uh, so that's that's one thing and other thing would be do res- proper research right. of the kind of roles that are available for that domain and what are some universities that uh, that are actually doing really good research work in that industry okay. the last one would be to connect with uh, people in the industry get uh, how the industry works and start developing the relationship with uh, people in the industry so that would actually uh, be really valuable even you can have some mentors who could actually guide you towards the right direction so i would say that would be the uh, three top points that uh, i would like to highlight okay that sounds good i think that's that pretty much sums up everything up right so niketa uh, thank you so much for your time today absolutely uh, thanks for having me here uh, aditya sure all right man so thank you all for joining and i hope you found this video useful